when the Fushinsias are dressed in golden poses. Get out those sicket ears and trim your roses. The trimming in my garden continues. This is the week when I do all the trimming for my roses and today we are going to trim this slightly neglected big um, climbing rose, repeat blooming rose. Before doing the spring trimming, always ask yourself what you have in front of you. In front of me I have the repeat bloomer. The repeat bloomer, middle size climber, the name of the climber is Generous Gardener. It is important because if you have one blooming climber, the, the uh, shaping and trimming would be after its uh, annual bloom. But since we have a repeat blooming rose in front of me, trimming is in spring. And since this rose is slightly neglected, it has a lot of older uh, uh, stems, I'm going to prune it fairly severely this year to bring it in shape. Now with this rose, when I planted it many years ago, it's quite an old climber. I made several mistakes with the plant planting site. I didn't plant it as close to the pole. I should have done it probably somewhere to the back and then train all the shoots to go in horizontal position. But I planted it closer to the front of the arch. And now I really don't have a space to train those uh, long canes in horizontal, um, in horizontal way. So my rose, as a result, doesn't have a lot of blooms at the base and a lot of blooms are happening on top. I'm trying as much as I can, look at this, you see this branch, to train it around. But since we have uh, the swing here, everything here has to be trimmed for kids to, uh, to have space on the swing. So. Position of the rose is not the most successful, but at this point I have to do, I have to, you know, do with the rose what I can here. Plus, this rose is growing on a grafted uh, rootstock. It's fairly old, so I'm suspecting that it's not going to produce in several years as well as my other roses, younger roses in the garden. And this year I have um, another rose coming, which I will introduce somewhere at the back here. And that would be not a climber, but it would be a rambling rose. I think rambling rose would be much better here. It will take over this uh, uh, pergola. This rose was not able to go on top. It's just barely reaching at the, the top, but it's not taking all the space it can on the top. Plus, I uh, took away several branches from this tree. And by the way, I almost finished building my uh, own uh, uh, arch. I will be showing you later. And uh, all, since all of these branches are gone, this rose will have more sun and more space because that tree, that uh, mulberry tree, was taking all of the space here. And this rose, I think, was suffering a little bit um, from lack of sun. So when you look at the base of my plant, you will see that there are two big and old stems right here. This one and maybe this one. They are old. I should have cut them a long time ago. And the reason we cut old wood is because we're going to want to give our rose a chance to create new wood. If we wouldn't cut this old wood, as you can see, which is my case, I didn't do it on time, Rose doesn't have enough of energy to support old unproductive wood and new shoots. So Rose is not going to create a lot of new wood. You see how wonderful and green these new shoots look? Nice and green. So when I take that old wood out, I will help Rose to release energy and Rose will have so much more energy to invest into beautiful blooms. So those shoots, those big stems are going to be cut out today and that will take probably one half of the climber out, which is fine. Climber wouldn't mind. It will be a good rejuvenation for my, uh, uh, for my plant. But usually during the spring uh, pruning of repeat climbers, we try to take one fourth of all the growth. That's a standard rule. Well, before I do my pruning, let's go quickly through uh, the name of stems, which uh, the climber produces. This way, it will, for you, it would be easy to understand the nature of pruning and the nature of uh, uh, climbing rows. So when you plant your rows in your garden, the first year rows will create long stems and those stems are called uh, main stems. 
next year those stems will become long and nice and they will create lateral shoots lateral shoots would be shoots which are coming out of the main stem and those lateral stems will create a rose if your main stem is growing nice and tall it will create only the flower at the top but if you will bend it horizontally the main stem next year will create lateral shoots and those shoots will create roses many roses for you so that's a basic principle of training a rose again i made a mistake and i planted this rose quite awkwardly here so i don't have a space to give this rose and train it horizontally I remember when I was a beginner gardener, I couldn't understand quite well how this process of uh, main stems growing and lateral stems growing and what do you do next year with all that mess. So in memory of that confusion which I had at the beginning, I will try to clarify it. So if you plant your uh, climber in the garden, the first year what happens to it? The climber produces long stems and nothing else. There would be no lateral shoots. And maybe on the top of the uh, main stem, there would be a rose. Next year, this main stem will try to produce lateral stems. And our job is to control those lateral shoots to two or three buds. So in spring next year, those lateral shoots would be trimmed to two, three buds because they can grow really tall. Uh, what happens next year? Next year your rose will start producing another long canes without lateral shoots. You let them develop, you let them go, go tall and long. We never uh, cut the main stems. We want our climber to be nice and big. Or we cut them if we want to control the shape of our climber. But generally long main stems are not cut. Only the, short, the lateral shoots are controlled. So year after that, some of the stems will become old, so you take those stems down all together and we have the process beginning again. New main stems are growing, next year they create the lateral stems, we are trying to control those lateral stems by annual spring trimming and the rose keeps living. So that's a process how rose is living in our garden year after year main stem creating lateral shoots, we control lateral shoots, and when the stem becomes unproductive and old, we cut it out, rose starts producing new stems, and life goes on. So for this job, you definitely would need a pair of good gloves, secateurs, good long lopers, because you don't want to get your head tangled in the uh, rose bush. By the way, here is a video how I did uh, the pruning of the shrub rose. Pruning of shrub roses is quite different than climbers, so you're welcome to check that video. I like to start from the bottom. Uh, this way I'm not confused by all the growth on top. Of course, if you can't get access to the bottom of the bush, you have to trim some of the uh, rose canes, but here I have good access to it. So my job is to take this big, big uh, stem and I'm going to do it with the help of the saw because uh, secateurs would be too difficult to, to get here. I can't even get here, gosh. How do I do this? Okay, like this. You know what? I usually wouldn't recommend people to do this. I have to take my saw and cut it. I have to be very careful not to damage all other uh, branches. All right, that did the job. Again, very careful because you don't want to damage all other stuff. Okay, good. Now, one by one, I will take this from bottom up.
Now look at the wood, the interior wood. You think that on the outside it looks healthy, but look at the interior wood. You see it's getting brown, so this stem is on its way to die out. So off we go. Such beautiful, graceful, long stems. Oh well, what can you do? You know what? I will take it out here. This is lateral. All right. Here's this thing. Place of nowhere. Maybe it will just bloom for me. Let's see. All right, let's see what will happen here. Now my rose is not going to like it, but I will try to train these long shoots here to the back where there is no sun. So my rose is not going to like it, but this is what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to take a ladder and I'm going to go up. Ooh, I broke the stem. Okay, out we go. Okay, so the job is done. As you can see, this rose has beautiful mane, long, wonderful shoots, and it would be a pleasure to train it horizontally. I have to give up that beautiful idea and start tying it um straight and uh, upwards this way i know my rose will not produce any beautiful flowers at the base only at the top which is okay but look at those beautiful long shoots oh gosh aren't they beautiful now for uh, tying i'm using this uh, plastic string it's green not noticeable it's loose it's not tight doesn't damage the stems the main thing with the tying material is for it not to damage the stem and it works very well you cannot see it in the garden doesn't distract from the beautiful appearance of the rose i have the whole uh, roll of it and it's serving me in my garden very well but if you uh, can find something which is fairly soft and doesn't damage the stems, you're good to go. Okay, so that's it. The job is done. As you can see, my climber looks so much different. I tied everything in. I tried to move uh, uh, my climber in this direction. This way, at least I will get blooms on top. I wouldn't get blooms here, unfortunately, but what can you do? That's the best I can do in this situation. Uh, this was an unusual way to do climbing rows since I cannot spread it in a fan shape. But come along with me and I will take you to a place where I have a fairly young climber, where I do have space to train it in a beautiful fan shape. Okay, so here we are near two young, fairly young climbers. As that you can see, this stem, big main stem, doesn't have a lateral shoots. It means it's one year old stem. And this year, second year, all these uh, uh, buds are going to produce lateral stems. Now, when you look at this stem, it's an older one, it's two year old. And you see all these lateral shoots are growing uh, long and unruly. And if I will leave it as it is, these shoots will produce another shoots and it will just turn into a mess. 
So what we are doing, we are controlling the size of these lateral shoots, leaving two, three buds. And this way, our rows will be manageable. And these shoots will be producing beautiful flowers this spring. All right, so this rose is all taken care of. Now this, this spindly grows, I'm cutting it out. This rose is no, nicely taken care of. Now this one, you see this dead thing? I'm going to cut it out. Uh, anything dead and old looking, cutting it out. Now this shoot I will keep. Again, controlling the side shoots. It's fairly easy to do this climber because it's so young. So that's it, as you can see, it's very easy especially to do the training on a young shoot, on a young rose. And as you can see, this rose has only two major stems. And because I shorten all the lateral stems, rose will have energy to produce later in the season, to start producing nice and new uh, shoots coming right from the base. All right, so that's it for today. I like how my rose looks. It looks nice and neat, ready to be fertilized and uh, let grow in spring and produce beautiful blooms for us. Hope this video was helpful. Do subscribe. Happy gardening. I will see you next time. Next year, those lateral shoots uh, uh, will grow even taller and your job is again to lower those Gosh, every time it happens, when I have to film, the dogs have to bark. All right, refill.